you might have seen a recent video where I drew this local waterfall. I mentioned how it was possibly doing it the hard way to draw it using a pen as opposed to pencil or with sketch marker, since all values had to be created by line, by hatching. So I drew this as a standalone line drawing with no intention of putting any sort of tone over the top. But I have since been thinking, and if I hadn't, a few people have suggested it to me, of how much of a transformation would take place applying marker tone to this scene. How much more could I bring it alive? How much more could I evoke the sense of water splashing down, cascading down these series of rock ledges? So I thought, why not have a go? And I feel like this is just slightly too small. So I've actually printed off a larger copy. I'm going to be using my Copic sketch markers. As always, I'll be using the brush end, but let's start. Now this uh, line drawing will be available on my channel community page. So if you want to screenshot it and print off a copy and have a go applying tone to it, to this scene yourself, you won't have to do the line work first. So I want to establish some dark areas initially. So I start with an N4 and an N3 as my two kind of middle, middle darker colors that I'm going to use. When I started this, I imagined that I would use from N0 through to N6. As it turned out, I didn't use the N6. Basically, at this stage, I'm applying some, some of the, the tones to the rocks, to the areas where it's quite clearly darker. So then I can work out how light to make the rocks that are either in more in sunlight or in lighter shade or have some water over them or flowing over them because they're going to be the crucial parts for creating the water effect. Now, I've also got the situation where I've got water coming down on the left-hand side of the waterfall that's actually in shadow as well. So I need to juggle my values so that those areas still look lighter than the rocks. It's a bit more straightforward where the water in the center is in the sunshine. So it's a fairly straightforward decision to leave that as white. But then we've also got the issue of where the water is thinner and or in shade. And so it's not white. There are shades of gray, albeit fairly light ones. At this stage, though, I'm still just trying to establish some of these darkest areas. When we apply tone, it's good to try and apply it over the whole scene all at once. And that's because we read tone. It has its effect in relation to the other tone around it, the same way color does. Is this tone going to look light or dark? Well, that's going to depend, that's going to depend on the tone next to it. If its value is much darker, then this one might look quite light. But if it's surrounded by white paper on all sides, it's going to look much darker. So we can't really tell how something's going to look when it comes to value until we see what value we've put next to it. And so that's why it's a good idea to keep moving over our whole scene and to try and establish some of the darker areas first it does mean often we have a lot less adjusting to do later when we decide that there's way too much mid-tone and we have to darken things to get the dramatic effect or, or simply the realistic effect that we're after. The other important thing is to leave the lightest areas until we have the concentration and the knowledge and maybe the warming up to do them well, simply because we can't make them darker. Once we've put something on our whites and our light areas, well, there's no going back. So we want to be as restrained as possible. So they're the areas where I do often go lighter than I intend to, just in case I haven't quite got it right. So I'll use... I'll use the N0 instead of the N1, thinking, and I'll come back with the N1 if I think it needs it. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. 
Sometimes I leave it, sometimes I might just do a second coat of N0 and just marginally darken the value. And I find that that's, that's right. And it, it's better than if I'd gone straight in with the N1. So when it comes to our lightest areas, I tend to be cautious. And when it comes to the darker areas, I try and put some really quite dark things probably within one value of what I think it's going to be from the start so that I can establish um, the play of light and dark off each other that's, got, that's going to establish the sense of light and shadow in the scene. Now, of course, this water is basically created by negative space. It's created by the shapes and the shadows around it. We don't actually draw lines to define the water in, in most cases, or it's not very important to the overall effect if we do. So I do need to be careful also that I adjust the, the, the values, the pens I'm using to allow for the creation of the water effect. Is this, is this ending up better than my line drawing is? I'm still not sure at this stage how it's going. It can be hard to tell halfway through, but equally, I really was very happy with my line drawing and I really did like the effect that it had. Now, obviously we're able to get in some ways a more realistic effect with, with value because that does mimic life more precisely than tone, than, than just line alone. But that doesn't mean it necessarily makes the better drawing or the better artwork. But at this stage now, I am trying to do what I think of as fine tuning with areas that maybe aren't as obvious to create some subtlety in less important areas, but without attracting too much attention. What is very helpful at this stage is to stand up and to keep looking at this drawing through the camera. It lets me see it, lets me see it smaller and that in a way concentrates the, the information that I've applied to it. It lets me read the overall effect more quickly and more effectively than just trying to keep looking over my hand as I draw. It, it almost gives me a fresh look at it and I find that's very helpful. How do you think this is going? Do you think this is looking more credible than the line drawing? Which one would you prefer to have? There are some things such as a sense of reflection, which, which obviously it's a bit easier to create with this, but then I think there are some things that we lose as well. I think we, we lose some of the, uh, the grittiness of line work, some of the, the strength that it can give. Perhaps this combines the best of both worlds because there is still some line work showing through. Even though I've covered a lot of it, uh, certainly in the, the, the leaves and the figures, But generally now, because the, the, the tonal values are so dark, there isn't a huge amount of line work that's really obvious. It really has a support act now, and this really is all about the ink that's been laid over the top from the markers. So we're getting close to the end. So do you think it's looking better than it did before, just as line? Here we have it finished. Actually, almost finished. It is hard to know where to stop, isn't it? But I'll call it a day there. So what do you think? Now, normally when I apply marker to one of my drawings, of course, we can't really compare it with the original. But in this case, this isn't the original drawing. This is. And so the question is, which one works better? I might just raise the camera so we can see them a little more closely. Do you have a preference? Line only? or line plus tone. I keep seeing things I want to change or at least soften the effect of. I'm really not sure myself. 
I think actually my preference is to add a little more line to this first take on the waterfall and to create a little more blackness in some of the darker spots. As it turned out, I only went up to N5 in using my sketch markers. And I think because there was so much line work, it did have the effect of increasing the, the darkness of the areas where I applied it. So I think that made pulling back from applying the N6 the best way to go. And now I'm not making an excuse, but there is a little more subtlety in some of the areas of this in life as opposed to on camera. But why not have a go yourself? As I said, I've posted a copy of this line drawing on my channel community page. So you don't have to go through the labor of producing the line work. You can go straight to the fun of applying the tone. And of course, the reference photo is already on the community page from yesterday. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this interesting. And I do hope that if you've got the equipment, you have a go. But look, whatever you draw and whatever you're drawing, and whatever you're applying value to, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.